In this video, we'll be replacing the battery in these headphones with a battery that's supposed to be for a Nokia cellular phone. Uh, the idea came from another video that showed that it can be done. The problem I found with that video was they didn't show a lot of detail. For example, the battery part number, etc. This seems to be the part number. I compared with the BL6C, and supposedly the 6C is thicker. So as near as I can gather from the video I saw, this is the battery that goes in it. So again, I don't take credit for the idea, but I will show a few steps that are not shown in the original video. So for the sake of saving time, the headphones are already disassembled. They come apart relatively easy. You just got to wedge in something between the cushion and the chrome piece here. Something thin and it'll pop out. Just be careful. Myself, I broke one of the plastic holes here but with a little crazy glue I put it back it's not a big deal you have three others just to hold in place so the plan is I'll be snipping the wires there for the battery for the original battery which is a little cheap thingy that lasts about an hour uh, it never lasted more than maybe two hours since the day I got it but uh, generally speaking, it's about an hour, hour and a half that it lasts. And with this new battery, it should last longer. So I'm going to set myself up. The plan is to solder the wires coming to the battery to the new Nokia battery. As you see, it, it indicates easily where to solder. I checked the fitment of the battery and it's going to fit perfectly in between the posts. The only thing I noticed is the wires from the old battery to the new battery are going to be too short. So I found myself some wire for it. I have two kinds but I'm going to use this one here is more flexible. This one is a little stiffer. So I put the new battery in a clamp just to hold it into place and I'm uh, going to strip the ends a little bit of the wire here, put some solder, put some flux here and solder. So red's going to be the positive, of course, and I'm going to use the blue as the negative, which is, I guess you could say, close enough to black. <laughs> and then once these are soldered to the battery, it'll give me a little extra length. And I'm going to snip from the headphones the battery and connect the other ends. I'm going to try and take away as much as possible from the wire while still leaving it loose enough to be able to move or disassemble the battery should it need to be. Okay, so here the wire is set up. There, a little dab of lead on the end. The hotter your soldering gun is, the easier it'll be. When I say hotter, I don't mean the strength. I mean, if you fire it up, give it a minute or two just to heat up properly. There we go. So now, put a little drop of lead on the battery. The battery only costs it about 10 bucks. So even if it doesn't work, you know what? So what? Of course, be careful. You don't want to overheat and have it explode in your face. I would suggest wearing goggles. Okay. 
Now hopefully I can short nothing out. So now the headphone side. I'm gonna clip out the old battery. a little bit of wire on the old battery so that if I should decide to use it for something else it's not going to be too much of a problem now what you also want to be careful about is the headphone here you don't want to pull it too much because it is attached so you don't want to screw the wire Now you gotta carefully come here and strip your two battery wires without cutting anything inside. Now what I would suggest, because they're small, 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 is just burn them off with a lighter. Which what I will attempt to do, or the, even the heat gun soldering gun. There's off the pot off the positive. off the negative. I'm going to take off a little more because I want to get a good connection when I solder. You want to be careful. You don't want to pull it off the board. So you're just heating it up. The plastic gets brittle. Or soft depending because I've had some wires where the plastic got soft this one seems to be getting brittle then you hold the end and pinch with your nails and pull so hopefully you saw that I wanted to check, but my ohm meter is dead. If this battery is still good after the soldering, I mean, I don't see why not. But um, so, what I'm going to do instead is hope that it is. <laughs> and I'm just going to plug it up and then see if it charges. And hopefully, that's it. So. I'm going to place the battery carefully where I'm hoping it's going to go. Like I said, it should fit nicely in between here. there so I'm going to bring out the wires that I need it's actually a nice snug fit It's 
actually a very nice snug fit right in between the posts. And I can clip off a good, let's call it inch and a half from the ends of my piece. So I'm going to clip it right where you see my fingers pinching and solder it up. Now if you have nice small shrink tube would do a beautiful job. I don't have. If you can get, I suggest it be a good thing. So once again, the ends of the wires, add some flux. clip my wires here so they should easily join up Now just to make sure no solder or flux or anything falls and damages the head piece and speaker or the board, I would suggest just before soldering everything together, you put some protectant, whether it be a piece of aluminum foil, a piece of cardboard, preferably not cardboard, but you know, something just to make sure that it doesn't melt anything onto surface that you don't want it to melt to. So once again, I'm preparing the wires before soldering them. Here now I'm going to twist the wires together and then give them the final solder together. I can feel on the wires that there is lead. You can tell because it's like stiff. Now what I like to do is, for example, here it's going to stick out a bit. And the same with the, pot, the, the negative. Is after I'm soldered, after I've soldered them together is I fold the ends in opposite directions so you know just log like in my little brain there it should in theory avoid contacting each other <sighs> quick check wires are solid so now it's to tape everything up so that nothing shorts each other and close it up like i said before i tape it for example the red one i'm putting one way and the negative the other as you can see, there you have it. At least I hope you see it. One is, the red one is going this way folded, and the black one that way. So here we have the headphone fully assembled and plugged in and so far nothing is smoking <laughs> and here we see it charging the light is on 
and now we just gotta wait till it's fully charged to make sure everything is working. All said and done, it took two and a half hours to charge through the USB port of my computer. It might be faster with the wall charger, but just the same, it gave about 12 hours of running time. So well worth the upgrade.